from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Father Dan Donovan. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from Grato Prorup from Terrace, British Columbia. This Mass is offered in memory of her husband, Eric Brorup, for the living and deceased members of the Nielsen and Brorup families, and for the souls in purgatory. May his soul and all the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Samuel. Elkanah, his wives and children, offered sacrifice at the temple in Shiloh, and then sat down to eat the sacrificial meal. After they had eaten and drunk, Hannah rose and presented herself before the Lord. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. She made this vow. O Lord of hosts, if only you will look on the misery of your servant and remember me, and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a male child, then I will set him before you as a Nazarite until the day of his death. He shall drink neither wine nor intoxicants, and no razor shall touch his head. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying silently. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you make a drunken spectacle of yourself? Put away your wine. But Hannah answered, No, my lord, I am a woman deeply troubled. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman, for I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation all this time. Then Eli answered, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant the petition you have made to him. And she said, Let your servant find favor in your sight. Then the woman went to her quarters, ate and drank with her husband, and her countenance was sad no longer. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Ramah. Elkanah knew his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoices in the Lord, my Savior. My heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides my enemies. 
because I rejoice in my victory. My heart rejoices in the Lord, my Savior. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who were full have hired themselves out for bread. But those who were hungry are fat with spoil. The barren has borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. My heart rejoices in the Lord, my Savior. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low, he also exalts. My heart rejoices in the Lord, my Savior. Alleluia. Alleluia. Receive this message not as human words but as truly the word of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and the disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, "'What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? I have come, have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and others kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once Jesus' fame began to spread throughout the region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus There's a rhythm in the Gospels in the way they evoke the various elements that go to make up the public life and teaching of Jesus. Many of his contemporaries regarded him primarily as a teacher or even as a prophet. In either case, they perceive Jesus as a man of the word, a person steeped in the biblical word. Those who listened to him or traveled with him for even a short period of time came, with it, came away with a sense of the authority with which he taught. He questioned the scribes and Pharisees and did not hesitate to attack them when he saw them to be acting in a hypocritical way. That authority was heightened by the deeds of power that he did, by the healing miracles and exorcisms he performed. Our readings at this time of the year are primarily from the Gospel of Mark. It is by far the shortest of the four Gospels. What he does not include, to any degree at all, are on the one hand the parables, and on the other, the sustained teaching that we find, for example, in Matthew's version of the Sermon on the Mount. 
Mark sums up the life and teaching of Jesus in relation to what he calls the kingdom or reign of God. The first words we had of Jesus in the gospel proclaim that the kingdom or reign of God is breaking into the world and that it is doing so in and through Jesus. Today's gospel offers a wonderful example of the rhythm between teaching on the one hand and doing on the other. It is a rhythm that comes back again and again in the course of Mark's gospel. The incident about which we just heard unfolds in the local synagogue before some of the religious leaders of the time, a setting which immediately alerts the reader that a conflict between Jesus and some of those present in the synagogue will inevitably break out. The second part of the reading focuses on a man who Mark describes as being possessed by an unclean spirit. When Jesus approaches him, the spirit begs him to leave him alone. I know who you are, the unclean spirit says to Jesus, the Holy One of God, a phrase that is also used of Jesus elsewhere in this gospel. The man who is possessed recognizes that God is with Jesus, but seems to be unable to open himself to the gift that Jesus is offering to him. Recognizing that the man is seeking to be liberated from the unclean spirit, Jesus addresses that spirit saying, be silent and come out of him. And crying with a loud voice, he comes out of him. The encounter between the divine spirit present with Jesus and the demonic spirit represents a typical moment in Mark's account of the public life of Jesus. At once, we are told, Jesus' fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. Before people are able to hear what Jesus is saying about God and about God's will for them, they need to be convinced that he is indeed someone who teaches with authority. They must be convinced before they will take him seriously. In spite of accounts of exorcisms and of healing miracles, Jesus did not come to work a few miracles, including liberating a few people from some form of demonic possession. He came to reveal and to heal, above all, to reveal God's plan for human salvation. He came to reconcile us with God and Christ and with one another. The Gospel of Mark includes accounts of several exorcisms. The demonic spirits who encounter Jesus often beg him to leave them alone or to allow them to take possession of animals to liberate humans. They know that Jesus stands in opposition to them the encounters of Jesus with the demoniacs and the evil spirits that inspire them emphasize the struggle between good and evil, Jesus and the unclean spirits. It is a conflict that is very much alive in our day, a struggle that will continue as long as the world as we know it continues to exist. Mark seems to be convinced that action is more important than words. The miracles and the exorcisms are meant to show us that this struggle between good and evil are at the heart of the life and ministry of Jesus. The greatest act of Jesus will involve the courage, trust, and hope with which he encounters the powers of darkness in all its forms, beginning with the Last Supper, with his betrayal by Judas, and denial by Peter. These and other moments in the story of his rejection, suffering, and death reveal to us the way Jesus entered into the depths of the spiritual, moral, and physical suffering, and by doing so, opened up the way through them to the triumph of the resurrection. If we are going to bear witness to God and to Christ and to all that they mean in terms of our faith and our life, we have to make an effort to live in a way that reflects and bears witness to our faith. This is much easier to talk about than to live out in the context of our daily life. 
It is only as we try to do so that we give witness to what we believe. It is then that people begin to recognize that we are trying to live an authentic Christian life. The ways in which we might do this are all but counselless. There might be some important thing that we perhaps surprisingly might do for a family member or a friend or a neighbor. For those who have the time and the energy to help out in a parish or a neighborhood social justice program should try to do so. These are a great, there are a great number of such programs that end up doing a great deal of good for the poor, the sick, the elderly, recent immigrants. We're not being asked to work miracles, but we are being asked to do something, something that will make a difference if it be only a friendly word or an encouraging smile for someone who clearly needs such an affirmation. Jesus found the balance in his ministry between word and action. He spoke in many ways, challenging his contemporaries, encouraging the sick and the poor, telling parables like that of the prodigal son. When we read or meditate on it, it gives us a whole new sense of our relation to God and of God's relation to us and to the world. God, the parable teaches us, is merciful, compassionate, patient, and forgiving. Let us now in faith and trust be present before God our needs. For all those in our daily TV Mass prayer intentions book, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In a month dedicated to the holy name of Jesus, we pray as a community of faith that his name will bring peace and reconciliation to our families and to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to war and to all that leads to war, let us pray to the Lord. For people experiencing loneliness and isolation, that relatives and neighbors will be mindful of them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For children living in the midst of war, hunger, and hatred, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mingling of his water and wine, we become partakers of his divinity, who became partaker of our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Gracious God, wash me from my sins, cleanse me from my iniquity. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good and all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For justice through your beloved Son, you created the human race 
so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, but that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness, make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass.